Okay, so we just talked a little bit about the, or went over the retrospective. So I wanted to, next thing I wanted to um, call out is, or just ask for opinions about making our retrospective issues public. There's a little bit of kind of conflicting information um, on that, or I'm curious what other people think. So basically right now when the issues are created, they're confidential um, for our team. Um, there's something in the handbook, which I put a link here about after you do a retrospective, you should make public the kind of the notes that you covered, uh, but I'm not sure how, what people think about that. So Clement, do you have a, want to verbalize? Yeah, there was a conversation a while back uh, with different uh, engineering managers and different teams have different way of doing things. Uh, my personal preference is that I like how we've been doing it where we just have our own internal things and we try to propagate the main themes to the public um, retrospective. I think that does a good job of kind of representing the team um, with, and also like, you know, giving people space to, to share more candidly within the team rather than, you know, within the whole world or whole company. Um, and it's also a little bit easier in the process because then we don't have to like figure out everyone, like, are you okay with this being public or, people accidentally thinking it's not public and it suddenly gets public and just uh, the potential um, emotions that might arise from uh, misunderstanding how that would work. So that's, that's where I stand personally, but I'm open to trying new things if, if other people feel otherwise. And I'm, that's kind of how I was leaning to. So I appreciate that. But like you said, if there's, in the spirit of transparency, I also want to like at least talk about it and make sure that we're all on the same page with this decision. So um, I don't need to change anything for for the sake of changing. But um, if anyone feels strongly one way or the other, or in the opposite way, where we should make it public, then we can talk about that too. Or we can. But uh, for now, maybe we'll just keep going like we've been doing. I think that is a good plan. So thanks. Uh, okay, Jose, you have the next one. Yes, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, custom metrics dashboard templates. So for this milestone, we are working on, on bringing custom metrics uh, dashboard templates to users either via the repository view, uh, via instance level. That means if system administrators want to add a new metrics dashboard, via Ruby, they can do that. Or we can, they, they can also add them via the a specific folder in the repository and that it can be selectable via the web ID or the standard plot repository view. And one thing that Nadia noticed uh, during the discussion on, on a couple of merge requests is that what kind of default uh, templates we should ship this feature with. Because currently I just, I'm just shipping a standard single stat one in the interest of time. But perhaps for discoverability, we might be interested in shipping either multiple templates uh, showcasing every single type of uh, panels that we use or just ship a large uh, template that has every single panel type and, so pe and it's well documented so people can understand what's going on. And yeah, I just wanted to get your input. Uh, we, we can still ship this with the single step one and keep adding more templates in future iterations, of course. So I believe we should uh, ship uh, multiple templates instead of single one. Uh, it would be easier to um, focus on the given use case, um, especially that we are targeting this, uh, I guess, for the newcomers to the uh, monitoring, uh, our monitoring solution. So I think it would be easier for them to like focus on single feature, like, okay, here's the single stat panel or here's the um, area chart, et cetera, et cetera. And since we have also the duplicate uh, dashboard feature, once they create uh, their own custom uh, tailored dashboard, they could copy it and use it somehow as a template. So. That's, that's my point of view on this matter. Uh, I also wanted to clarify one thing that you said that may be um, misunderstood, but um, in fact, uh, 
the uh, instance administrators wouldn't be able to add new or shouldn't be able to add new dashboard templates via Ruby code. Uh, it is not recommended or not documented uh, solution to do so. So technically they are able to do so, but uh, it involves uh, adjusting the GitLab installation files, uh, which we do not recommend. And we don't necessarily bound our, ourselves to maintain any kind of backward compatibility. Uh, so there is only um, the other uh, solution that you um, laid out. Uh, so the uh, GitLab instance administrators could enable a special project. It's not a folder within each project. It's the one special project or namespace within the GitLab instance, which hosts number of different kind of templates, including uh, already existing one like the Docker files or uh, GitLab CIs, and uh, this is not the core feature. This is the uh, premium feature, as far as I know. So I just wanted to clarify on that, so that we know we understand. Yeah, uh, I get it. Thank you. <laughs> Jose, you, regarding your first question, I I also agree with Nicolas that we should ship multiple templates with multiple uh, uh, like panel types. I also think that we should focus on, at least for the first iteration, if it's possible, to focus on the more popular uh, uh, panel type. So it will be probably area or line chart instead of the single, uh, the single state. And as we progress, uh, we do have an implementation issue for this iteration to measure the amount of usage around our visualization. So if we would like to enhance that, then I suggest first, let's, let's rely on, on real telemetry and see if more users are using a specific chart, then let's add that chart and we continue as we go. And obviously there is also like a bit of a chicken and an egg. If you don't have examples, maybe you have like less people will use it, but at least for the first like one or two uh, um, templates, let's use like, Let's take like, let's make example of the most popular uh, panel types. So I would recommend using area or line chart to start with, and then we can iterate. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, I, only, I only added a template because otherwise the specs won't, won't pass or I wouldn't be able to build any kind of specs, but we can add it as many as we want, no problem. Cool. No, I'm, I mean, just in the interest of time. I mean, and probably like having one or having like three or four will take more time. So, yes. so it will be great if at the end of this process and maybe we can create an epic out of it, we'll have examples to all of our visualization. But at least let's start with the most popular one. Sounds good. And also I wanted to talk about uh, the context that we ship this uh, templates with. Uh, because the default common metrics YAML file that we use to build or the default dashboard that we ship with, it's heavily tied to a Kubernetes context, which means if you want to have your metrics displayed, you need to have a GKA cluster or a Kubernetes enabled cluster with the labels that we're using. Uh, otherwise, even if the queries are correct, you're not gonna get any data. So in the interest of discoverability, I was thinking perhaps changing these to a Prometheus context where we will use the default labels from the node exporter and use CPU, memory, network, uh, throughput. And that could actually make it easier for people because they will just have a standard Prometheus server, have the, uh, the queries written for the specific, uh, for that specific scenario. And they can just pretty much plug their own Prometheus server and get started. I think it's a great idea. And I, th I think we, we are tied into this concept of Kubernetes monitoring, which is, which is good, but in reality, a lot of our users are either using hybrid or not using Kubernetes at all which makes some of our you know, 
So our monitoring solution will still work, but it can be some, it's going to be challenging, like the default dashboard is not working and you need to create environments and um, other stuff like that. So if we'll be able to have something that will just work, and it doesn't matter if you have like Kubernetes or not, it's not tied to that uh, limitation, it will be awesome. And I would say that if we can think about maybe adding another dashboard, uh, like we have the default dashboard now and we are working on adding like a pod health dashboard. So if we can like maybe take this and maybe augment it a bit and say, hey, this is like a raw dashboard that will always work out of the box. If you don't have a Kubernetes instance, it will also be awesome. It's not something we need to work on, but something we can think about. And, and, and I think if we'll have like the right templates, we can easily create a, a such a dashboard. I think we can uh, actually add a prefix and say like uh, Prometheus underscore uh, CPU uh, underscore average. And that will be just on a Prometheus context. And we can yep. swap the prefix to Kubernetes and say, hey, it's the same thing, but for a Kubernetes context. That's, that's, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, Clement had a question. Uh, I don't know if you want to voice it or... No, I think, I think you covered it. Awesome. Uh, just, just to quickly summarize the question, Clement asked if we needed some feedback from the SRA team. And I asked uh, Cindy from the SRA team, which is she, she's, in, she's in charge of the, all the metrics that we have here at GitLab. And she showed me that they don't use the Kubernetes exporters for their own monitoring. They actually use the standard node exporters. So. Yeah, our info team, again, similar to the rest of our users, don't do Kubernetes or don't do only Kubernetes. They do hybrid. Awesome. So I'll update the issue and I will mention that for our templates, we want to keep a Prometheus context and we will work on having also Kubernetes uh, templates for that as well. But for our first iteration, we're going to stick to Prometheus once. Thank you, uh, Duff. I think you have the next point. Uh, you're muted. Sorry, I shared and I looked for the unmute button. Uh, yeah, I just want to call out uh, an epic that I'm working on uh, is bringing metrics to, to complete. Um, as you know, uh, one of our uh, uh, solutions is metric and we want to mature it from uh, viable to complete. Uh, the work on that, I know that there is a date uh, which we'll probably need to move and push because uh, we didn't take into consideration the realignment that we had in the team. So there is like a set date for it to be complete on our maturity page. So disregard this, this date and don't get pressured by it. So, no, because I think it's by the end of this iteration or next iteration. Uh, doesn't make sense uh, because the work that we need to do in order to move metrics to complete is, is pretty big. It's based on some of the discussion that we had in the past around our, uh, in our roadmap. And I wanted to break it down. We have it on our handbook and now I wanted to break it down into like real issues. Uh, so I bu bucket them by uh, several themes, which are also epic, which is the agent configuration, metrics instrumentation, visualized data, and alerts. I have to say that maybe alerts will be will become a, a category by its own, but for now, I said let's let's add alerts there because it's a part of the metric uh, uh, solution today. Uh, but maybe you know we'll we'll cut it from here and we'll place put it in a different uh, in a different epic. Um, and basically, I I took a lot of the work that we do to do today and try to bucket them by, uh, by epic and sub epic. So the work that we do around like the ad, uh, uh, the ad metric is a part of the visualization of the data, alerts, uh, metric to instrument to minimal, we want to enable our users to, uh, uh, to instrument their application 
uh, that they are deploying using, using GitLab and the configuration work that we just discussed uh, uh, briefly on, on some issues on how we can set up multiple Prometheus and how can we enhance uh, the, the configuration because we know that there is a lot of friction point when a user come to install a, a Prometheus. So um, I'm not 100% this is like a finalized list because there are a lot of issues that I keep remembering that, uh, uh, that we need to add. But think about, think about those like buckets that when you create issues with, let's try to map and see if they fit into one of those, uh, one of those templates. I think it will help. Uh, first, it will help us organize the work. Uh, it will help us, uh, it will help show the status on, you know, what are we working on? Uh, you know, we're working on a data. What does it mean? What, what part of the roadmap it is? And of course, if you have feedback and you have things that you think I forgot and we need to add, feel free to uh, add mention me. I'm sure we have like hundreds of issues. Probably there are some more uh, that needs to be added. So I just want to make sure we know the structure uh, and uh, let, let's, let's try to work according to that. And this is also related to the second point, but I'll just stop and ask if there are any questions around this. Justin, I saw that you had a comment. Yeah, there's, I just wanted to point out because there's something that's coming up in a couple different areas that the, in order to move maturity uh, levels that we want to make sure that there's enough time allotted to complete this category maturity scorecard. And it is a little time consuming and that's why I wanna bring it up that when you're creating your plan to do this, that we need to consider how to fit this in from a timing perspective. Yeah, we actually, we were one of the first that did this exercise, I think, with logging. And so, yeah, it, it can take, I mean, it, it really depends, uh, Clement, in answering your question, it really depends on like what, uh, what are the jobs to be done. Like for instance, for logging, we had to set up like this entire, uh, entire environment. We simulate a problem uh, that were, were, were shown in the logs and then we presented to the user with a scenario and saying, hey, there is a problem, now go find it in the logs. That's your task. And the user had to find his way around and see if you were, were, were able to, to discover the problem. The, the, the main work was to create, uh, to create the environment, to, to fake the, the, the data. So this was like the, most of the work and obviously recruiting the people. So, uh, I would say it really depends. Uh, based on based on the work that we did on logging, I think we can improve. We can make it. I think we can make it faster. Logging was like a bit of a bit more challenging. I think like for this, if we would like to uh, uh, mature it, I think that uh, like one of the job to be done is to tell the user, here is your Prometheus instance, here is GitLab. Now. I want to see you how you'll be able to configure it, connect it to GitLab and visualize the data. So I think like creating an environment will be much easier than the logging. Uh, so it might take less time. So less than an iteration, but maybe it really depends. All right, thanks. Uh, we're out of time here. So I know there's a couple more things on the agenda, but Maybe we can cover those next week, if that's all right. Um, but people can read through. I think it's in the product goals are um, very worthwhile to talk about and interesting to yeah. kind of review for everyone. So um, read, read through those, and then we can talk about them uh, next week. We can discuss them. All right, thank you, everyone, and have a good rest of your day. Thanks.